Hey what's up YouTube fam? Welcome back to another mind-blowing history lesson. Today, we're diving deep into the origins and tactics of the Second Sino-Japanese War. So buckle up and get ready for an epic journey through time. Alright, let's set the stage. It's the early 20th century, and Japan is on a mission to expand its empire. With rapid industrialization under their belt, they're hungry for more resources and markets to fuel their growth. And guess who's caught in their crosshairs? China, with its vast riches, becomes Japan's target. The showdown begins in 1931 with the infamous Mukden incident. Japan stages an attack on a railway line in Manchuria and takes control of the region. This sets the wheels in motion for an all-out invasion of China in 1937, starting with the Marco Polo Bridge incident. Both sides go all in, pouring their military might into the conflict. Now, let's talk tactics. The Imperial Japanese Army, known for its discipline and training, unleashes a blitzkrieg frenzy on the Chinese. They're all about lightning-fast offensives to overwhelm their opponents and snatch up territories. And boy, do they have the firepower to back it up. Japan's military superiority comes from their cutting-edge weapons and technological advancements. Their air force is a force to be reckoned with. Fighter planes and bombers dominate the skies, giving them the upper hand and allowing devastating aerial assaults on Chinese positions. On the ground, they have a well-oiled machine of highly mobile mechanized units armed with tanks, armored vehicles, and artillery. But it doesn't stop there, folks. The Japanese forces are all about coordination. They launch concentrated attacks, combining infantry, armor, and air support to disorient and demoralize the Chinese defenders. They unleash a storm of firepower, pounding the enemy with heavy artillery barrages and aerial bombings before launching ground offensives. And here's where it gets really intense. The Japanese love their encirclement tactics. They study the terrain like pros, using their mobility to outflank and surround Chinese positions. They cut off their supply lines and reinforcements, leaving them stranded and vulnerable. It's a strategic move that puts immense pressure on the Chinese, and eventually, they crumble under the weight. But the Japanese don't just rely on their military might. They also play dirty mind games. They employ psychological warfare, spreading disinformation and propaganda through leaflets, radio broadcasts, and more. Their goal? To weaken the morale and resolve of the Chinese population, hoping to undermine support for the Chinese government. Now, initially, Japan's tactics pay off big time. They score major territorial gains and have all the momentum. But as the war drags on and the Chinese forces adapt, the tables turn. Japan's initial success turns into a grueling war of attrition. Now here's the moment you've all been waiting for. If you found this first chapter of our historical journey intriguing and informative, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our captivating content, exploring history's most fascinating stories. And that's not all, folks. We're not done yet. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the intense and bloody battle for Nanjing. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. So, stay tuned, subscribe, and let's continue this mind-blowing historical adventure together. Now, when it came to facing the mighty Japanese invasion, the Chinese knew they had to get creative. They couldn't match the enemy's firepower or conventional might, so they turned to guerrilla warfare. These Chinese badasses, known as the Red Army or Partisans, operated in small, highly mobile units. They unleashed surprise attacks, ambushed Japanese supply lines, and messed with their communication networks. These guerrilla fighters were like shadows, constantly harassing the Japanese forces and making it impossible for them to consolidate their control. But that's not all, folks. The Chinese resistance had another trick up their sleeve, scorched earth tactics. They knew the Japanese relied heavily on the resources they captured, so the Chinese decided to burn it all down. They systematically destroyed infrastructure, crops, and anything the invaders could use. By cutting off their supply lines and weakening their ability to sustain military operations, the Chinese resistance aimed to undermine the Japanese hold on their occupied territories. And you know what? 
The Chinese weren't going at it alone. They were all about forging alliances and rallying international support. The Chinese government, led by Chiang Kai-shek, worked hard to unite different factions and groups under a common cause, resisting the Japanese. They also reached out to the international community, calling out Japan's aggression and seeking diplomatic and material support. It was all about strength in numbers. But let's not forget the unsung heroes of the resistance, the Chinese population. These brave civilians played a crucial role in supporting the resistance fighters. They provided shelter, intelligence, and supplies, all while facing the horrors of occupation and Japanese atrocities. Their unwavering spirit and sacrifices were a constant inspiration for the resistance forces. Now, let's zoom in on the battle for Nanjing. This city was a major battleground and a symbol of Chinese resistance. Both sides fought tooth and nail to gain control of this strategic gem. The Chinese defenders, led by General Tang Xingji, used fortified positions and urban defense to hold their ground. They set up barricades, dug trenches, and established strongpoints to slow down the Japanese advance and inflict maximum casualties. But the Japanese were not messing around. They planned their assault on Nanjing with precision. Their artillery bombardments, aerial bombings, and ground offensives were a force to be reckoned with. Japanese infantry units advanced street by street, engaging in brutal close-quarter combat with the Chinese defenders. The battle was intense, my friends. Heroism clashed with desperation as both sides fought for every inch of ground. The Chinese troops defended key positions with valor, engaging in fierce gunfights and close-quarter combat. However, the Japanese forces, with their superior firepower and well-coordinated attacks, gradually gained the upper hand. They pushed deeper into the city, forcing the Chinese defenders to retreat and regroup elsewhere. But let me tell you, the battle for Nanjing took a heavy toll on everyone involved. The city, packed with innocent civilians, became a war zone. Gunfire, explosions, and the cries of the wounded echoed through the streets as the fate of Nanjing hung in the balance. In the end, the overwhelming might of the Japanese military proved too much for the Chinese defenders. Nanjing fell to the invaders in December 1937, marking a significant turning point in the war. And unfortunately, it opened the door to the horrors of the Nanjing Massacre. The battle for Nanjing was a true testament to the resilience and determination of the Chinese defenders. They fought against impossible odds to protect their homeland. It also sheds light on the devastating nature of urban warfare and the innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. So, here's the deal. After the Imperial Japanese Army captured Nanjing in 1937, a horrifying chapter unfolded, the Nanjing Massacre. This was no ordinary tragedy, my friends. We're talking about an absolute nightmare that shook the world to its core. When the organized Chinese resistance collapsed, chaos engulfed the city. The Japanese troops, driven by a dehumanizing ideology and lacking discipline, unleashed unspeakable violence and brutality upon the defeated Chinese population. It was a complete breakdown of humanity, with innocent civilians, men, women, and children, becoming victims of unimaginable horrors. Mass killings were the order of the day. Japanese soldiers went on killing sprees, shooting, and charging at unarmed civilians with bayonets. Tens of thousands of people were mercilessly slaughtered, often in the streets, parks, and even makeshift execution grounds. The sheer scale and brutality of the killings were beyond comprehension. The Japanese soldiers showed no mercy or regard for human life. But wait, there's more. Brace yourselves for this one. Mass rape became another haunting aspect of the Nanjing Massacre. Women of all ages, from young girls to elderly women, were subjected to widespread sexual assault by Japanese soldiers. They were gang-raped, sometimes multiple times, and then brutally murdered. It was a systematic and organized campaign of sexual violence that left scars on the survivors and their families for generations to come. And that's not all, folks. The atrocities didn't stop there. The Japanese soldiers looted, set fires, and destroyed cultural heritage. They ransacked homes, pillaged businesses, 
and stole or destroyed valuable artifacts. The once glorious city of Nanjing, with its rich history and culture, was reduced to rubble. Now, here's the chilling part. Estimates of the death toll vary, but it's believed that hundreds of thousands of Chinese civilians and disarmed soldiers lost their lives during the Nanjing Massacre. The survivors endured unimaginable physical and psychological trauma, with the memories of the atrocities haunting them for the rest of their lives. The Nanjing Massacre left an indelible mark on the Chinese people. It became a symbol of the horrors of war and the depths of human cruelty. The international community was shocked by the scale of the massacre. Journalists, diplomats, and foreign residents present in Nanjing documented the atrocities, providing undeniable evidence of the horrors inflicted upon the Chinese population. Now, let's talk about the international response and the legacy of this tragic event. The world was appalled by the Nanjing massacre, but some governments hesitated to take decisive action due to geopolitical considerations. However, brave individuals from different countries, including journalists, missionaries, and human rights activists, worked tirelessly to document and raise awareness about the massacre. Their courage and dedication exposed the truth to the world. After World War II, efforts were made to hold the perpetrators accountable for their crimes. The International Military Tribunal for the Far East, held in Tokyo, examined the war crimes committed by Japanese military personnel, including those involved in the Nanjing Massacre. Some were brought to justice, but sadly, many evaded punishment. The legacy of the Nanjing Massacre continues to shape the present. It serves as a painful reminder of the atrocities of war and a call for peace, justice, and human rights. The memory of the massacre is deeply ingrained in Chinese national identity, with efforts made to preserve historical sites and establish museums to honor the victims and educate future generations. In recent years, there have been calls for greater recognition of the Nanjing Massacre in global history education. Steps have been taken to promote understanding and reconciliation between China and Japan, including cultural exchanges and dialogues. These initiatives aim to heal wounds, foster understanding, and prevent the repetition of such horrors. And there you have it, my amazing viewers. We've reached the end of this incredible historical journey, exploring the Chinese resistance and the Nanjing Massacre. If you were as captivated by this story as I was, make sure to smash that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us bring you more mind-blowing content like this. Remember, history is not just about the past. It's about learning from our collective experiences and striving for a better future. So, let's honor the victims of the Nanjing Massacre and work towards a world where peace and understanding prevail. Thank you for joining me on this extraordinary adventure, and I'll catch you in the next video. Stay curious, stay awesome, and keep exploring history. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Until next time.